This is Plastic Adventures. Hey everyone, welcome to the Plastic Adventures Toy Community Podcast Show thing that we usually do, that we don't usually do. <laughs> yes, and uh, you are once again finding yourself with us on an episode of Plastic Bits, which is the catch-all for all things that we might want to talk about. And in this case, we're going to do some sharing, or more specifically, Doug's going to share a little, and I am going to share the bounty of the last, like, three weeks of not sharing with you guys. So uh, how, how do you want to kick this thing off, Doug? I'll, I'll you... tell you what. I'll go first, and then we'll make this the Steve show. How about that? Right. Okay. Sound, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So my sharing is I have been waiting for this particular item for over a year and a half from Entertainment Earth. And I, there was one point where I was like, screw this, I'm just not gonna get it. It's not gonna ever happen. I'm never getting this thing. I'm never gonna be happy. Uh, I'm gonna, all this stuff means absolutely nothing if this is just not in my collection, right? That's where I was, I was, I was resolved to be that way. But then lo and behold, Entertainment Earth goes, hey, payment processed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and with that, I got War Duke. Yes, that figure is super badass. And he's even better in person. He really is. Uh, he's like seven inches tall. And yeah, yeah. I mean, he's like he's like what master verse scale or something like that. Yeah, roughly. He's, yeah. He's he stands pretty much shoulder to shoulder with He Man. Uh, and my light there sucks, but uh, really can't see it very. There, maybe that's a little bit better. So I mean, he so. He comes with swords, knives. His shield is freaking awesome with that skull, that horn skull. Yeah. Face. Um, it's it's one of those things where it's like you remember playing with the War Duke toy when you were small. Yeah. And you're like, this is kind of how I always saw him in my mind, even when I was playing with that little dinky action figure. That's kind of how I always saw him. Yeah. So, well, in a line of characters that were like not at all related to the cartoon war duke was a real standout you know super yeah. the, the original figure had like the yellow uh the blue that that chain mail on one half the a cool looking sword with paint apps on the on the cross guard so yeah. he was actually like one of the very in my opinion one of my favorite and very best uh ad and d figures that came out oh absolutely without a doubt and and this one uh it just takes that you know up a whole another seven eight levels because it's just so freaking cool uh the only thing that's a little odd about it is there is like a, a fire accessory that goes over his sword uh-huh and i don't remember his sword ever being flaming like i don't know where that came from i don't know Might I, don't have just been I, didn't, I don't see it in any like any of the drawings of him i don't remember seeing it in the in the cartoon so that's kind of an odd accessory but like that's not even a complaint that's not <laughs> that's not even close it's just it's just a really yeah. freaking cool toy. When when I got into Dungeons and Dragons, I don't remember there being like any great like classic War Duke art. You know, I, I came in. Uh, I played a lot of Palladium in the '90s, which was the Palladium books versions of Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Uh, so they just had like Kevin Costner as Robin Hood. They had Val <laughs> Kilmer as Mad Mardigan knockoff pictures. But got it. I missed out on the original art. I don't really know War Duke's stats or anything, but I know from a design perspective, uh, it's an incredibly cool figure. And I just, I wonder if there was a little bit of influence in the Beastmaster movie oh. where they're fighting the Juns and you got that guy with the bat helmet thing there and he's like this badass looking bad guy. So well, maybe winged helmets are, are not a new thing to fantasy, right? They've They've kind of been... Actually, recently, you don't really see a lot of winged helmeted stuff, but back in the early days of fantasy, you saw the winged helmets. You saw the, the you know, the eagle wings on some of them. You saw other things. And it was his was cool because his were bat wings or slash dragon wings that yeah. were on his helmet. So, I mean, evidently clear that this was a bad guy and he knew it. Yeah, and, and his toy, toy line counterpart, uh, Strongheart, had like the, I don't yeah. know what those were, like bird's wings or something on his, his yep. paladin helmet. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, a, a year and a half in the waiting. Uh, I'm not going to say it was like, oh, it was so worth it because I was pissed. Uh, it was a year and a half of waiting for. What was it? A year and a half? 
It, it was almost a year and a half. Almost. Okay. Almost. It was over a year ago, Steve. Come on. <laughs> yeah, because if we're talking about things that took a year and a half plus to come, I'm going to share with you something that finally showed up that <laughs> I, I had moved three times since I pre-ordered this figure. <laughs> three times on the pre-order. Oh, my gosh. And I luckily, they got a hold of me and said, hey, if you're alive still, your, your pre-order will be shipping soon. So I'll, I'll show you what my long lost pre-order was. Oh man, yeah, Super Seven Duke. Yeah, these are pretty Gorgeous. terrific. They're the they're the ultimates, and uh, all of the issues that I had with uh, Ultimates Optimus Prime being that it just wasn't that good of a figure. Duke is every bit as is great of a, a figure. He's he's big and tall, you know, seven inches. The detailing is incredibly minimalistic. I mean, can you see that there's just not much yeah. going on there for like? But it, it, it's supposed to be because it's based right off the cartoon. Yeah, and they were very conscientious of the colors that they picked. You know, you got this kind of like dark khaki bandolier, and the boots are really simplified, and the you know the the green pants, and there's not a lot of like holsters or anything on it. So actually, it's it's a pretty terrific figure. Um, and he's got a classic tell. gun that he has from the cartoon, not the, not that the stalker gun that he, he came used. with both. Oh, he came with both, really? Yeah, yeah. He actually came with a ton of stuff. Um, uh, he came with his wrist communicator from the cartoon. He came with the classic mm -hmm. submachine gun, backpack, and helmet. Uh, bunches of different hands, uh, and a, uh, an additional like O face Duke head, so you can change it out. So he's really he's capable of a lot of those like classic cartoon poses. It's it was a really really good figure. I'm not buying any more because they're terribly expensive. But they are, for, you know, being a fan of the character, having to have it, uh, I, I don't regret it. Had I paid that, that price, guys from that same series is a beautiful figure. But I don't, I don't, I don't even think I can. I would swing that for for that, no matter how beautiful it was. No, I, I think if you watch Entertainment Earth, maybe within the next like six seven months, if there were orders of plenty of these, like there was the Ultimates of Transformers. You're going to be finding it for like 30 or 20 bucks, something like Ooh. that on a big sale to get them. That but, would be worth it. Uh, I was not willing to take the risk on this one. That was a up for pre-order. Click now. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'll show you something else that I, I recently found that was pretty cool. Oh, the, the six-inch indies. Yeah. Yeah, I found these at uh, Target in Burlington. Um, good. How's his face look? Well, it's uh, let me uh, let me get him up there. Mm, it kind of looks like Indiana Jones, I guess. So these figures do not; they don't photograph very well. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you that once you get them in your hands. And you see the likeness really, really does come out on these. It's not not picked up very well uh, by the cameras. I took a few pictures in front of the in in the light box the other day and put them on the on the Facebook page. But mm -hmm. like when you see Marion and she's not under these bright lights, the likeness is actually really, really good to to Karen Allen. Okay. Um, you get her away, you, you know, she's got the little chin dimple and all the stuff. This is my wife's figure. Indy is mine, but I had to buy this for my wife. She loves Mary and Ray. <laughs> so that was a that was a recent find. Uh, something else. This is what I'm very very excited about, and I've been waiting a long time, and I finally was able to put these together. Oh, look at that! Yes, they are the posable Alvin and the Chipmunks figures with the cloth cloth. I didn't shirts. even know you were going for those. Yeah, yeah, I always those. wanted to. I always wanted to get them. I ended up buying a couple of lots off of eBay, and I'm in at about 13 bucks a piece for the figures. Uh, normally, just to get one of these complete, you're in like the 20s. But really, I just I, I watched very patiently and finally found them for what I was willing to pay. So um, it also doesn't hurt that I recently watched a Chipmunk Adventure with my wife, and uh, <laughs> it really made me really want to get them again and. Think things just happened to work out okay. So, yes, uh, they're and they're the posables. They're not the PVC figures. These guys actually 
So are these uh, are these newer ones or these older ones or these? No, these are like 1983. Oh wow! All right, so they're vintage. Yeah, so that's one of these animated movies that came out right. It was like 1987, I think, for Chipmunk Adventure. No toy support. Mm -hmm. Cartoons were pretty much off the air by that time. You know, maybe I think Channel 11 in in uh, Tri Cities was running Chipmunks in the afternoon or something, but it was like at a two o'clock slot, so you didn't get to see it. Um. So getting those was a big one for me. I was I was really excited about them. Right it's, on. it's not like violent, but it's cool. Well, I remember Alvin and the Chipmunks had like a stuffed animal like line. Like you could get them like I don't know, however big, like maybe a foot big stuffed animal versions of them. I remember. Yeah, yeah you could you could get those. Those are still relatively cheap on eBay. So they had those. They had a line of these uh static pose pvc figures and then they had the the posable figures with the cloth outfits the posable ones went with this van that opened up and became a stage oh cool i've looked at it but i just don't i don't have room you can get them for in you know relatively a good price still but i, I don't got room to put it in here anywhere right on. so happy to get the happy to get the chipmunks very very <laughs> excited to cool. put those on I like the shelf those. So here, here's one that kind of came out of the blue that I'm actually really excited for as well. And that is... Oh, Punisher. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, so this is a custom Punisher head. Uh, I want to say it was 3D printed that I found on eBay. And the body is actually the Legendary Rides Punisher figure, Marvel Legends. They had this really cool Punisher that came with a motorcycle... And he had like a Viking helmet and stuff. So uh, what we ended up, what I ended up doing was just doing a head swap on it, painting the head, custom painting the head. Obviously, the eyes are a, a real pain in the butt to get to. Um, and that leather jacket was an accessory I bought off of eBay. So, ah, oh, well, it looks really yeah. freaking good. Yeah, at one point, I was gonna paint the shirt like dark gray, mm -hmm. just like out of the movie, so no skull, but. The legendary writer's Punisher is a very expensive figure, so I uh, <laughs> thought twice about it. But yeah, that Dolph head actually turned out really, really well. It looks uh, good. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah. I was I was very, very happy with it. I'm a huge Punisher fan. That I love the '89 movie with Dolph. It's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. So um, just doing a quick little. I have little not custom. seen that in a long time. I may need to put it on the top of my watch list just to just to remember it. I went so far as to buy the Australian region free DVD that came with a work print. Oh, really? Yeah, it's got a lot of backstory to it that really makes the movie make more sense. But it's like another 15 minutes of movie that we didn't get to see. But still, it's just like all out action movie, uh, <laughs> you know, 80s one man army kind of a thing. But I love it. I mean, it Absolutely. was very, it's, it's very Punisher for what it is. So. The other things I'm going to show off really quickly here. By no stretch is this any kind of rarity that you can't get because these are hitting target like gangbusters right now. But the Return of the Jedi retros, um, these were ordered from Big Bad Toy Store. And um, nice. yeah, they, they shipped pretty quickly. I was really excited to really excited to get them. Um, so I've got the entire collection of six. And you know, the only one that's really kind of a little funky is that Jedi Luke for some reason. Is his, um, yeah, I saw his cape is different than the original release. I did not take it out of the package, but I've seen so many of these things at my local Target, I might buy an extra Luke just so I can. Um, what gets me, I'm going to see if the, if the camera will pick this up. Is that too is that too blurry? Are no, you it looks great. Up? Okay, I can see it. Okay, so Luke, his head is flesh colored plastic. Mm -hmm. Not a really big deal, but it's the other one was black plastic with paint. Yep, I remember. So this flesh colored plastic, it's not quite as solid color looking. It's not as peaked and pale as the other one. And yeah, but at they, least you don't have the, the the run the problem of getting the black nose, Luke, if you ever take him out of the package. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's in the, the, the paint app is just slightly different. It looks like the eyebrows are a little closer together. Oh. Um, but you know what? 
these toys are so effing awesome. Oh, yeah. No, no regrets whatsoever. They are just the coolest thing in the world. I cannot wait for them to be right back behind me on this wall. So I, <laughs> I was super, super excited about that. Uh, yeah, so speaking of the Star Wars retro, I saw some people already starting to get the boxed version of the obi-wan wave did you see that yeah they're not up for pre-order yet but i've been seeing somebody some got them reviews. a couple people have yeah the um the people that that handle the online reviews you know how they get sent production samples to to do i've seen it kind of get out that way uh but god darn it i have to have those oh yeah they, they're they're a need <laughs> Yeah, like like it's it's just it's necessary. So uh I think we'll get our shot. I think they they've learned their lesson on some of this collector driven stuff. I, I think we'll we'll get our shot at it. Cool. Uh, last but not least. This is one that's been a little bit of a mystery, but uh because we know that so far many have been revealed, only one has been up for pre order. Wow. Look how so great this is our is. this is our retro indie, right? On that on that cool looking old school Kenner card. Okay, oh, cool so looking. indie indie is currently up for pre order. You'll get him any at, at any point that you want. There's plenty of them. Um, I found that at at Target, hmm. but what I also found at Target is something that wasn't up for pre order yet. Oh, the Belloc. Belloc. I also found at Target something that's not up for pre-order yet. Oh, totes. Oh, yes. I also found something at Target <laughs> that was revealed and kind of went up for pre-order. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Uh, I, I I saw that the mechanic came up to, to order. And I thought, damn, I better get my, my hands on that and pre-order it. But uh, knowing that I found these four... That means that Marion and Sala are out there somewhere. Right on. And they, they just showed up randomly at my target. They lasted way longer than they should have on the shelves. But uh, I do think that there's going to be uh, plenty of opportunity on those too. But, you know, I go in there every single day. I go in there around 10 or 11 in the morning. There's a really nice kid that works there that I, I chat up. I never, never ask him to look in the back for anything, and I never ask to go through boxes that are on the cart. I'll just come back like an hour later since I work 150 feet from the building. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, man, for, for, geez, three, four weeks since it's been since we shared, that's like mega haul level of stuff that's that I've stuff, picked up. Man. And now I'm in a drought. <laughs> when I come to visit in the Tri-Cities this coming weekend, uh, if we can get out there by that Xenophile store, I'm gonna buy the Vampire Hunter D figure that's oh, out there. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna do that, huh? Yeah, and I think that when we I get up for the Inland Northwest in in May, uh, I got a few things to look for there too. But you know, like here here it, it's raining and pouring, and I'm getting all this cool stuff, and then we we <laughs> it's gonna turn off, and there just won't be anything else to to buy. Uh, what day is that uh, Inland Northwest uh, toy show? It's usually around the 15th. It'll be like May 14th or 13th or 15th. Um, okay. I'll take that Friday off and, you know, drive down drive down on Friday, uh, spend a little time just like normal, and then we'll pop up there on Saturday morning and, and see if there's anything to be had. The show's sold out. There's no vendor space available. So That's good news for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the sake of hunting, it's it should be a a pretty good little event to go to. Right on, and it keeps getting more and more popular every every time I go there. Like, more and more people are showing up, and it gets a little bit more and more crowded. But you know, that's that's good. It, it means that people are out there, you know, buying this stuff, moving this stuff around. Uh, and I think everybody, you know, it just really likes that show. It's it's always been a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I really enjoy being there. We've only had one show that was kind of a stinker where I think that some it didn't quite fill up with vendors and you know, we walked out of there with literally nothing. But the rest of the time it's <clears throat> for the sake of my marriage, I never find anything good there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm still jazzed about that uh, shockwave that I found there. That was such a great find for that. It was 
I, like, I think my favorite's been that blue radio that you found. Oh, the there. one that I picked up? Yeah. 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 I just love that. That's so obscure. Everybody remembers that from their childhood, but they don't remember who had it or where it came exactly. from. I think it was a Radio Shack thing, if I remember right. Uh, but that that was that's just an awesome find. I was so excited for you when you found it. And it works. Well, and it, yeah, I know. That was the thing. I had cleaned off the connections and the radio turned right on. Uh, so, yeah, it was great. I liked them. And and the price was even better. Like I couldn't even. I'm like, I when I asked him what the price was because he didn't have prices on it, and he said it. I was like, I didn't want to like drop it like and, and take it too fast. Like I was like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, that's a good price. And inside, I'm like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised you weren't like, well, I know you want insanely cheap, <laughs> but can you do cheaper? Yeah, that was one I, I was not even I didn't even want to negotiate. I didn't want to no. I didn't want to take the chance. <laughs> <laughs> not risking it, yeah. I didn't want him to pull out his phone and go, well, hold on a second. Let me <laughs> Yeah, let me eBay it. God, I hate that. How much is this item kind uh vendor? I don't know. Let me check eBay. Are you gonna give me a good deal or not? You want yeah, cash hey, seriously un untraceable cash money? You're gonna give me a deal or not? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think usually we always find at least one good thing at that inland, uh, Northwest toy show. So I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to going. Yeah. Got, got a couple of things on the list. Go box related. Oh um, yeah. Go box. See if I, I know I, you're we'll going after I, that cycle, huh? Uh, I would love to have super go bots cycle and leader one. I love the scale of them because they look just about right next to Optimus prime and Megatron G1. Yeah. Uh, but something in me has really made me want a command center for some reason. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I still need to get Flynn and Sark from the original Tron figures. I would love to have those. Uh, I'd love to fill out my Ertl A-team figures so that Murdoch's not not lonely. <laughs> Lots of little things like that. And usually you can find it for a really good price. So uh, I don't have anything super expensive this time that I'm, I'm gunning for. Just make sure I said that, that last time and that. bought, said it last time and bought the Masterpiece Star Saber. So, oh, I know, but that was such a good find, man. He's so cool looking. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. I'm looking at it right now. Zero regrets. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure when you get the uh, the GoBot Command Center that you put a fresh 9-volt battery in there and wait for Nicole to go to sleep and then push the button and just... <laughs> That, it'll echo throughout the entire house. <laughs> yeah, and then like on the packaging, it probably just said has sound. Yeah, <laughs> not like sounding the alarm, none of that stuff. Just like makes noise, like the original Millennium Falcon. That the only thing that I can say was close to that was like operation when you touch the tweezers <laughs> to the side yeah. of the board. Right on. All right, so that was some good stuff to show and tell. Um, yeah, yeah, can't wait to get this stuff all squared away. But I was, I was excited for everybody to share in in my happiness. <laughs> well, it was a good happiness. I liked it. I like I like seeing all your toys. All right, so uh, I think that's the end of our plastic bits. We'll go on to our next segment. But until then, <clears throat> please check out Steve's Facebook page, uh, Plastic Plastic Adventures Toy Community on Facebook, and me on Instagram at the Toyman Eighties. And we'll see you guys in the toy aisle.